I love this time of year, the sheer opportunity to see deer in the early spring with the lack of understory and pressure on the deer to find suitable browse is perhaps greater than at any other time. However, with increased opportunity comes greater responsibility. Believe it or not, in the UK, more roebuck are shot right at the start of the season in April than at any other time of year. This is despite the fact that the buck is still in velvet and winter coat. It's important therefore to make sure that you're making sound decisions on selection. So what is the right buck? Well, first and foremost, you should aim to shoot those animals which would otherwise have been taken by predators, such as the absent wolf and lynx. That is to say, the young, weak and infirm. In a managed coloured bucks, the basic rule of thumb is that more than half the animals culled should be yearlings, in fact around 70%, with the remaining cull being made up of 20% old and just 10% middle aged animals in their prime. In the following film, I set out to put this into practice, and with antlers over his ears, six points, and showing good promise, it's not this one, so I let him go on his way. I don't know about you, but I thought that was absolutely lovely. A roebuck there still in velvet uh, with an accompanying doe. Uh, it'll be another few weeks, I expect, before he starts fraying and shedding that velvet from his antlers, and probably mid to late May before he's in proper hard horn. But uh, absolutely beautiful. I love seeing them in velvet like that. Fabulous animal. And would you believe it? There's another one. A different animal. And this one's no more than about 70 yards away. Absolutely beautiful, aren't they? Difficult spot actually against the uh, trees there, but uh, absolutely beautiful, still in this dark brown coat. And that'll be shed in a few weeks time for a much more foxy red summer coat. Absolutely beautiful. As well as being a good time of year to weed out some of the weak animals, it's also a good time for me to take stock of what I have on the ground, and I'm delighted to find this fine looking beast just a short time later. Look at that, wasn't that absolutely brilliant? What a lovely roebuck there. Uh, still in velvet, so it's gonna be a few more weeks before he sheds that velvet, it's gonna be in proper hard horn. But uh, I love these animals, Capriolis Capriolis. You can see where we get the club name from. You can find them all around the UK, absolutely beautiful. But uh, a good one to keep that one, uh, not something we wanna be culling out. We don't want the, only want to be taking the uh, cull bucks at this time of year, early on in the season. Uh, but uh, nonetheless, not more than 50 yards, and uh, what a cracking buck, absolutely fabulous. It seems that this year at County Deer Stalking and the Capriolas Club grounds, we have an abundance of animals, and I'm quite literally spoilt for choice. Here there's a fabulous looking beast amidst a group of other animals. Again, with antlers way over the height of his ears, he's certainly a keeper, or at any rate, should be left until after the rut in late July and early August. So with these animals discounted, what exactly should I be going for? Well, young bucks can have an unsettling impact on the ground. And so at this time of year, it's this type of weak head that should be culled out at the first opportunity. Not only that, but they also make for some great eating. However, regrettably, these two don't present and are off before I can draw a bead. As the evening progresses, there are other opportunities. However, neither this one or the temporary problem that this buck has experienced with diarrhea qualify. Nonetheless, he's one to watch with any loss in body condition coupled with the diarrhea, meaning that he could be suffering a more serious underlying illness. 
As early afternoon turns into evening, I take the opportunity to size up other animals as they soak up some early spring sunshine. So look at that, absolutely fabulous. An early season roebuck. Still in velvet, but nonetheless a six pointer and well over his ears in, in uh, antler growth. Definitely one we'll be wanting to revisit in a few weeks time uh, when he's uh, shed that velvet from his antlers. And off he goes. Until finally, I find what I'm after. A young buck lying down against the bank, offering a perfect shot. However, as I wind up the zoom on the Swarovski scope, something else grabs my attention. In fact, I'm not only perfectly positioned for a shot, but I have two shootable animals, both the yearling and what we refer to as a murder buck, exhibiting just two single spikes. With testosterone levels and sparring between the bucks due to commence in a few weeks, after some internal deliberation, I shift my focus to the more pressing matter at hand, the murder buck, which, although mature, is the clear choice. In an attempt to take the yearling with a quick follow-up shot, I drop him on the spot with a spine shot. But the youngster is nonetheless off and away. So what can I say? Well, another really interesting one. We had two roebuck out there in front of us. Now this was a quite an interesting point because one of them was much younger and uh, one could argue inferior. The antlers were of less quality but you'll notice on the larger animal it then drew my attention because it's actually a murder buck and by a murder buck I mean it has simply two points. Now that's very very dangerous in a fight because those two points can come through and injure another animal and as we come in now to uh, April, coming into May, that buck's going to get more and more territorial and he's going to start jostling and sparring with other bucks. And when he does that, if he gets into a fight, the chances of him injuring another animal, which potentially is of better quality, um, is quite high. So <laughs> after much deliberation, I thought uh, that actually I would take, out, take the opportunity to take out that murder buck. Now I'm really, really pleased actually. Uh, a good, solid decision, if I do say so myself. You can see here, we've got a perfect example of a murder buck. Just two points. There's no forward tine and there's no back point either. So no back tine. He's looking a little bit scruffy because he's uh, winter coat turning into summer coat, but don't let that fool you. He's a perfectly healthy animal, apart from the fact that he's got this antler configuration, which is very unfortunate for him. What's really useful there actually is the uh, Swarovski optics that I've got. I've got shooting with a Z6 eye scope and it's got a really good zoom on it. And that's when I find these scopes with a zoom super useful because you can zoom in, check out that antler configuration, reassure yourself of what you've got and then wind it back down. I usually choose about eight power um, and then make a good solid shot. So uh, really, really pleased with that animal. Exactly the right one to be taking out at this time of year. If you've enjoyed this film, please subscribe to our channel. Just click on the subscribe button and hit the notification bell. Additionally, if you'd like monthly updates on what's happening in the world of deer stalking, then please sign up to our Deer Stalkers Almanac by visiting our website www.countydeerstalking.co.uk or by finding the link in the description below.